Hello everybody, I'm really glad you can make it here today. If you're new around here, thanks for dropping by, and if you are a returning viewer, it's good to see you again, I really do appreciate coming back. So, it's me, the editor again. I didn't plan on making it here two videos in a row, but yeah, I just want to apologize for this video coming out so late. I had planned for this to come out Saturday midnight, since that's when I usually upload my videos, or release them. But yeah, for some reason when I was doing this one, the voiceovers took forever. Usually I accept the fact that voiceovers take an entire day, but this one was really different. I don't know why, but enough of me talking and making excuses. Let's get on to that painting video. I hope you enjoy it and find it interesting at least. So let's check it out. So before we start painting the actual camouflage itself, I wanted to talk a bit about tricolor finish camouflage. And there seems to be a bit of variance, but for this video's purposes, I wanted to go over the two types that I found. And I really hesitate to say the word types because I'm really just talking about color schemes, really. And so the first type has a dark green base with stripes of brown and this very light tan. I find the colors very similar to late war German camouflage. And the second type of finished tricolor has a green base with brown stripes, but instead of the, the tan, we have a bluish gray. Once again, a lot of variance in the camouflage patterns themselves, but these seem to be the two main color schemes. It seems that the one with the tan came before the one with the blue, but I don't really know. I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that one. So. In terms of the camouflage pattern itself, and for what I'm going to be painting today, here's a trend I see. Once again, lots of variants. You can find photos that prove everything I've just said wrong, but for this video, here's what I'm going with. So, we have the green base, right? And we have the brown stripes. But the third color always seems to be touching the brown. It's never on its own. It is always touching the brown. Sometimes I see the brown on its own, but that is a completely different matter since we're talking about the third color. Another thing about finished camouflage, it wasn't all hand painted. I've seen some photos for some, you know, airbrushed stuff. So if you aren't too comfortable with hand painting or you have an airbrush, you know, you can use it. But once again, there's lots of variants. So if you want to do a finished camouflage, you should look at some photos. I'm just speaking about things I'm going to keep in mind when I paint this camouflage pattern. So let's mix up that dark green, and once again, my colors aren't historically accurate, they are historically adequate, and I'm fine with that. So for this green, I have two main colors, that being the model air NATO green, and just standard model color field gray. Additionally, I have two more, that being Vallejo's basic skin tone, as well as their dark yellow. The skin tone is there for me to lighten it up if I think it needs to be lightened, but not in a way that just kills all the vibrancy, like I feel the way white does and the dark yellow is there for me to introduce some vibrance. Additionally, as you'll see, I have to use a fifth color, that being the Model Air Imperial Japanese Army Green from the Japanese Army Color Paint Set. And I decided to use this color because when I was mixing this tone, I felt it needed some blue, and the Imperial Japanese Army Green has some blue tones, and that's what I was looking for. And you can see me laying this color on right now. One thing I have to say though, I was not happy with this color for a few reasons. Not the shade itself, I was quite happy with the shade, but here's the thing. In this paint, I used two model air colors, and I used quite a bit of them. The NATO green and the Imperial Japanese Army green, they comprise, I think, the majority of this shade, and they have a few issues that hold true for all of model air. And I do not like model air for paintwork for hand brushing. I'm sure it works fine if you use an airbrush, but I don't. So these are the qualities of model air that I do not like whatsoever. First off, because it is pre-thinned, it doesn't want to cover as well as standard model color does. You're kind of gonna see it in the future in some future shots. You can't really see it right now because it's just me laying down some wet paint, but the gray primer really wants to shine through. And as a result of this, I have to lay down many more coats 
than I did. Oh, you can sort of see it on that sort of periscope looking thing on the left side. But yeah, I have to apply many more coats than I would have to do if I was just using standard model color. And as a result, you can probably imagine when you use more than one coat or more coats than you need to on a tank or any sort of model, you have the potential to obscure some details and that is what happened. Luckily for me, it wasn't on anything too major, it was just on those vision slits on the sides of the turret. But yeah, that is one thing you have to keep in mind if you are going to be hand brushing some model air. And another quality of model air, this isn't really an issue per se, it's just an observation. It comes out quite glossy. Once again, it's not really an issue, you might like this, but this is just something to point out if you are hand painting model air. It is not the same as model color. And yeah, this may not be an issue, but just something to keep in mind if you are hand painting Kaleho like I do. So I've applied the first color and here it is. Nothing to write home about, it's just a green tank, but I mean, if we can overlook the issues that come with hand painting model air, it went together pretty alright. I mean, it's just a solid color. Well, I mean, here it is, and let's start mixing the second color, that being the red-brown. So let's paint the red-brown. If you have one of those German tricolor paint sets, I'm sure that you can use um, the German red brown, but I don't, so let's mix this color ourselves. I'm gonna be using three colors for this. A flat earth, some of the German camouflage black brown, lovely color, as well as some cavalry brown. And this color is to introduce some red tones because I feel that those first two sorta of lack red and I want this to be a reddish brown. And here I am mixing everything. One thing I have to say is, now, when I was mixing this tone, I kept having to add more and more of the dark brown. And that was kind of worrying for me because I didn't want to, I guess, use too much of it and have a color that was too dark. But I eventually get a color that I am happy with, and here I am starting to apply it. It sort of takes me a while to um, get my paintbrush to where I want it. I'm trying to figure out where I start this camouflage pattern especially since I'm doing this behind a camera but once again I start off at a very inoffensive spot that being the large flat side of the turret. So here is the tank with the brown stripes applied. 
And while I was painting these stripes, I realized that for the third color, I'm going to go ahead with the tan instead of the gray. And here's why. This is not an accuracy thing. This is why. The brown is reddish. It is warm. And the gray is bluish and cool. And for some reason, I felt that a warm color and a cool color just hitting each other look kind of weird. I do not know what color theory is. I don't really even have a grasp on warm and cool colors that well, but that's just what my brain thinks. So let's mix that tan. I have three paints that I initially use for this, that being German Grey, Off-White, and Khaki. And what I initially do is make a very light grey color by lightening up the German Grey with the Off-White. And then when that's all mixed, I add the khaki until I finally get a color that I want. I do add two additional colors, um, dark yellow and flat earth. The dark yellow is there just to make everything a bit more vibrant. And the flat earth is there just to tone everything down. Because up until I added that color, it did look a bit too yellow for me. And here I am applying it. Just like I said at the beginning of the video, the tan stripes are never on their own, they are always bordering the brown stripes. So that's what I'm going to be doing, which you'll see, and that is just one thing to keep in mind if you want to paint a finished camouflage pattern like I am.
right, here's the tank with the finished camouflage so far. So, the camouflage went together pretty well, I have to say. You know, it looks quite nice, I think, and it does look pretty finish. I mean, whatever that means. And yeah, I am quite happy with it. Yes, it looks a little weird because that's how I feel all camouflage patterns look before you weather them. But I mean, if we're just talking about the pattern itself, I am quite happy. However, this video isn't done, is it? So what I have to do next is paint the running gear, as you can see, and do a bit of distressing, which I am quite excited to show you. So keep an eye out for that. What I'm doing next is the distressing, and I have to say, distressing is a technique that I absolutely love, and is one that I'll probably be doing on all of my future builds. I like it that much. I first tried out distressing on that Stridswagen M38 I did. If you've seen my decal making video, you know the kit. But here's the thing, even though I really liked the distressing job I got on that tank, it was overall a single color. It was a great tank. And I wanted to see how distressing would look like on a multicolored vehicle. So here it is. So here's the thing. How does distressing work? Well, here's how I do it. If you have an airbrush, if you have slightly different equipment, your method might be different. But this is how I do it. First, I have to identify the color that I want to distress. On this BT, it's very easy since everything's going to be distressed. But depending on your tank, your vehicle, what you want to achieve, you might not want to distress every single color. It might benefit you to keep more colors pristine as opposed to distressing some others. But for the sake of this example, let's talk about the brown. So we've identified that we want to distress the brown. And what we do next is we mix up a brown color that's similar but slightly different in a way. It could be a little lighter. It could be a little darker. It could have some orange tones as opposed to some red tones, but regardless of what the difference is, it has to be different. And so we mix up this color. After we mix it up, we thin it out a bit, but not too much. We don't want it to be an acrylic wash or anything, but it has to be thin enough for us to work with with the brush. And then we just brush it on. As you can see, I'm not doing any really wide or long brush strokes, but I'm doing small movements. And as a result, when it all dries, we should have all of these irregular patterns that look really cool and after we weather it these irregular patterns should end up as these very small tonal inconsistencies that are quite subtle and quite nice. Speaking about subtlety though, I have to say after you apply this distressing it might look a bit too stark for you. You might think you've ruined it. It's sort of like color modulation, right? But here's the thing, after you weather it, which is the key, it does tone itself down quite a bit and provides you with a pleasing result. Here's the thing though, if we're just speaking about the distressing that you're seeing, because of course these voiceovers happen after I've shot everything, I have to say that the green could have been done better. I feel that the green was a bit too dark and the distressing color I applied wasn't too different and as a result all the distressing was swallowed up by the green. I might rework it because of course I can always rework it, but if we're just speaking about the footage I have right now, I definitely could have done the green a bit better. And here is the tank after I've applied the first distressing coat. As you can see, it's a bit more evident on the tan and the brown. Yeah, the green just swallows everything up. But once again, I could rework everything. And that's what I definitely do if I were to redo this job. But overall, I'm quite happy with how this tank looks so far. And we have one more thing to do, and that is to apply the decal. So. Let's do that. So it's time to apply the decals. And the kit gives you two options for the hooked crosses, the Akaristi. And I decided to go with the bigger ones that are more square. And as you can see, the one on the left, I went a bit too far when I was cutting off the excess decal film. And this proves to be quite an issue when I apply these decals. Because here's the thing. When I was modifying this kit, I had to add some pistol boards which essentially are just two bumps on the sides of the turret. And these bumps made it impossible for these decals to conform. And that arm that I cut off, it ended up flaking off and just was terrible. So I fixed this issue and here's how. You get an extra one of these crosses. And what I just do is I apply the third decal over the cross that needs it. And I also paint over it. 
this does a few things. One, it seals in the decal. It also, you know, corrects the color issue since these things were apparently black instead of blue. And also, just gives you the painted on look since, you know, I'm painting this thing on. And what you're seeing here is are the decals right after I applied them, before it flaked, just without some microsol, and here's how they look. Sorry I didn't get the decal process on video, it was just too much of a hassle for me to do, and I didn't feel like recording it. And here is the finished tank, at least for now. As you can see, it doesn't have the outer portions of the running gear on, but if we're just talking about the camouflage, here's how it looks. And you can see the fixed akaristi, which I do like how they look now. But yeah, this is the end of the video. I just want to say thank you if you watched it, especially if you stuck around to the end. If you liked the video, feel free to like, subscribe, comment. I do go through all of them. And ring that notification bell since I am still planning on doing weekly uploads. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Whenever that is.